Today I'm playing around with Wander. This is a premium extension for Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm gonna be using it to recreate this map animation of France here. Pretty much all the assets that you see on top of the map here are gonna be from this extension. This tool allows you to pull assets from different libraries throughout the internet. You can pull GIFs, emojis, vector files, icon packs, images, all from their simple user interface. You can access over 62 million media files, instantly download them and bring them into your project so you don't even have to leave your project, which is really, really cool. And you'll get a really good feel for how it works as I recreate this map animation. If you're interested in this tool and you wanna go check out more, follow my affiliate link, which is down in the video description. If you wanna purchase it, just use promo code Boon at checkout and you'll get a nice little discount. So I'm inside of my After Effects project and to start off with, I've got this map of France. I got this from freevectormaps.com. It's a simple shape layer. And now I've got Wander installed. So to open it up, I'm gonna to go to Window, Extensions, and select Wander. Now it's a really simple user interface, which I really like. Uh, these are broken into categories and then subcategories. So at the top here, you'll see you have a category for GIFs, then you have images, and then you have uh, basically what I think are shape files, SVGs. Over here is your history of everything you've already downloaded, so you can search by date and um, or by category as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and search France and click enter, and that'll bring up all the GIFs here. I can click on one and it's gonna bring up this info panel. It shows me the resolution, the name of the title, and if I click, it shows me the format, the frame rate, as well as the file size, and it shows me the source, which is Giphy, and the creator. And I can actually click on here, and that's gonna bring me directly to the licensing and copyright information on Giphy's website. Now before adding this to my project, I can select loop and pre-compose if I want. I'm always gonna have loop on, because I always want this to loop. It's a 10 second comp, and a lot of these are only you know one to two seconds, so we definitely want them to uh, loop throughout. So you can see some of the subcategories are pretty cool here. I have the GIFs, I have like Instagram style stickers with alpha channels, I have text animations, and I have these emojis. And this particular library can't be searched, it's set, and this is just a bunch of just animated emojis. And I can change the size of these assets here. You know, I can make them smaller, make them bigger. And if I want, I can also turn off the media info panel. Over here for images, I have four different sources here, Wikipedia, Flickr, and it's still keeping my France search category here. And the same deal here, I can click on them, we can see the source, if I click on here, it takes me to Wikipedia's page for the rights of reusing content. And then last but not least, I have these SVGs, which include emojis, icons, and these primitives. Now let me just go ahead and clear this search because there's not much for France. So if I clear the search, you can see I have all these further subcategories of emojis, which are really cool. Basically everything you've ever seen on an, a mobile phone before. And I have specific icons and these primitives. All right, for the first step on my map, I'm gonna add some mountains. So I'm gonna go over to emojis here. I'm gonna go down to travel and places and see what this has to offer. So there's just a plethora of options here and let's start with mountains. There's a lot of mountains in France. Okay, so there's a few right here. To add this to my project, I simply need to double click something. So let's grab this snow capped mountain. I'll double click that and it adds it to my timeline. Now the really cool thing that makes these so versatile is that this is now a shape layer. And if I open this up, you can see the contents of all these shape groups. And now I can add animators to do whatever I want with these shape layers, super, super powerful. So I'm gonna scale this down and I'm just gonna start to duplicate and add a few, change the size a little bit. I can see the bottom of these mountains. I got this little green color and I actually wanna use that green color to color my map. So I'm gonna go down and grab France and then click on the color swatch here, grab the color picker, and I'll just select that green there so that blends in. Now I'm gonna grab all these mountains and I'll just pre-compose these, call them snow-capped mountains. And I could just duplicate that. Maybe bring them down here. I'll duplicate that pre-comp and I'll call these Pyrenees. I have no idea if I spelled that correctly. Let's just drop these in and bring these over here and maybe quickly like reorganize them because these are more, you know, off in a row like this. And now I'm gonna go grab the non-snow-capped mountain. There we go. And we'll just drop a few of these throughout. You know, I'm just changing a few here and there, you know, just to mix it up a little bit. All right, so I got all the mountains. I'll pre-comp all those. Now let's add some trees. All right, so here I got a tree, I'm gonna double click this 
Now right away I see a problem and it's the fact that these greens are not popping out very much on this. So what I can do is I can open this up, go to the contents, and I'm gonna look at the group on each particular one. And Okay, so we wanna take every other group here and we wanna change the color. All I'm gonna do is bring the brightness down to something like 25. There we go, now that pops out. Now I can scale this way down and simply duplicate this one. All right, and I'll throw in one of these palm trees and it looks like I'm having the same issue with this. So I'll jump in to the contents and change the green color of these bottom two. Just bring that brightness down a little bit. There we go. Now I'll scale this down. And you know what? It looks like I might have gone a little too crazy with the mountains, so maybe I'll get rid of some of those. Just kind of make it a little more simplified. And maybe some mushrooms. And I'll throw a quick little wolf in there. There we go. Let's put a wolf down here in the mountains. And I'm going to add some clouds as well under traveling places. I'll throw in some clouds. Okay, now I could keep going with these static emojis and I could obviously animate these by hand. But one cool thing is I could go back to the GIF and go to these stickers and I have a lot of cool options here. Now I'm gonna see if I can add some visuals that are more specific to uh, the regions of France. So first I'm gonna just search Eiffel Tower. And here we go, let's grab this. And you see that's only three frames, so we wanna make sure that's looping. Let's add that. All right, perfect. And you know what, it's not France if there's not a baguette. So since I have these set on loop, if you look down here, you can see some keyframes that are here, and these are for time remapping. And now there's a basic expression applied, which is looping these, so I don't have to worry about copying and pasting them. Now you can see these animate on, which looks very cool. Over here on the eastern side, we have a city called Strasbourg, and they're known for their Christmas market. So I could go over here and do a search for Christmas. Let's look for stickers. And I'm gonna grab this Santa Claus right here. Up here in Normandy, they're known for their mussels and fries. So let's check out what they've got for that. So good, you have some mussels with some beer and fries. Oh man, it's just so tasty. I'll just put that up here on the coast. Now let's get some fries with that. There we go. And now let's see what we got for beer. Now down near here is a city called Le Mans. It's actually where I live. I have a house here. And they, it's also the city that's known for the 24 hours of Le Mans race. So I'm going to look for race cars. This one's pretty cool. And then you know what? It's not France if you don't have cheese. can put a nice little sailboat off the coast here. France is also known for its apples and cider, so let's see if we can grab some apples here. There we go. Another big thing you need, of course, is wine. Now, I'm not sure if this looks like Bordeaux, but hey, close enough. And we'll put this down here, where Bordeaux is generally located. And then, of course, a bicycle. The French are very sportive. Let's find someone skiing as well. Okay, here's a little skier. Now you know what? I'm gonna hide them up in the mountains. Down in the south, there's a city called Toulouse that's known for aerospace and it's the headquarters of Airbus. So let me throw this down there. We'll put it right about here. And then of course the Cannes Film Festival. There's also fields of lavender down here, super popular. Okay, grab this. And there's tons of castles around here. Let's look what they have for castle. Um, and there's actually a really, really popular one up here called Mont Saint-Michel. And I wouldn't be surprised if they actually have it here. And that looks like it right there. If you come to France, you definitely should check this out. It'll be super touristy, but way worth it. And now let's throw some text in here. Let's see what they've got for France. 
Okay, I'll grab this bonjour. And one last touch. I'm going to throw a tractor in here as well. And I'll go ahead and pre-comp all these stickers just to kind of keep it a little neat. All right, now I can keep this up all day adding things to this map, but I want to finish this up. So one of the last steps I'm going to do here is add some texture. So I can go over to the images here and I can just type in texture. And that's going to give me a whole lot of options. And let's grab this one here. And I'm going to put it all the way at the bottom behind my map comp. And you can see how big this is. I can probably scale it down just a little bit. I'm going to create a new shape layer here for this blue color. And I'll put it all the way at the bottom. And then I'm going to grab this texture. And I'm going to switch the blend mode to luminosity. And I'm going to bring the opacity of this down. That's looking pretty good. So to bring this all together, I'm going to add a paper texture to both the map and this little ocean here. So I'm going to select all the layers, pre-comp them, call it Final France Map. And I'm going to do another search for paper texture. And here I have a texture right here. Let's add this. Now I'm going to run through this part really quickly. If you want to see a tutorial on how to add texture, uh, specifically paper texture, to these maps, I'll link to another tutorial I made down in the video description that takes you kind of more step by step. But here I'm just going to add this new paper texture. I'm going to duplicate it, set it down here. And this top one here, I'm going to set to multiply. Then I'm going to go grab the levels effect, put it right here. This is going to allow me to kind of control the contrast of this. And you know what? I'm going to go back in here because this little ocean is not looking too good. I'm going to turn the opacity of this down even more, maybe to like 20. Really take that out. And now I'm going to quickly go grab a displacement map, set it on my pre-comp here, set the displacement map layer, have it do effects and mask, because I'm going to put a blur on there. And I'll set these to 25 and to luminance. I'm going to have it stretch to fit the map and wrap pixels around. That's looking pretty good. And it's picking up the grain of the texture, which is Pretty cool, if I want to bring that down, if you zoom in, you can see the edges here. If I add a, a blur to my displacement map, that'll kind of soften those edges a bit. Or if you like it, you could always leave it. I'll go grab a blur and put it on my displacement map. I'm gonna actually rename this displacement map. And now you see as I pump up this blur, if I pump it way up, you can see those edges are a little bit better. You can take it back down. You can see a quick before and after. And you know what? I need a little sun up here. So I'm going to go back into my pre-comp here, search for sun, grab this one here. And to make sure, uh, I'm putting it in the pre-comp to make sure the textures are applied to it. And there you have it. That's the Wander extension for Adobe After Effects. Again, this also works in Adobe Premiere Pro. And I didn't really dive into the settings here, but there's a lot of cool things that you can do. It has auto updates. So if you click here, you'll have it automatically update, which makes it even easier to use. It'll just auto update in the background. You don't have to worry about it. Um, down here, you can customize the interface. So right now it's set to the sleep mode where it'll dim the panel. I can set the opacity of how I want it to dim. I can specify where I want all the assets to save. I can do a relative import so it can um, keep everything right in my project folder. I can also specify the import size and base it on a percentage of the size of the composition. As always, if you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. If you want to see more videos on maps, I have a Monday Maps playlist you can go check out, link in the video description. Or if you want to see more Tuesday Tool videos like this where I review uh, plugins, extensions, and scripts or templates, I'll also link that in the video description.